Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Vasim Pelas and I work as a manufacturing application specialist. Today's presentation is around the principles of uh, digital prototyping and we're going to see how we can uh, strengthen our workflows, improve productivity and collaboration through the use of Autodesk for data management solution. So during the next hour we'll look into the key benefits of implementing data management and what these benefits are to the business. We're going to look at the comprehensive functionality of Vault Basic and Vault Professional, followed by a short demonstration of a typical workflow that will help us better understand the additional benefits that the professional version has to offer. Our primary goal here is to ensure that our customers are able to manage the digital prototyping process from concept all the way through to manufacturing. Uh, and this being done with integrated data, data management tools that allow multiple people and departments to collaborate uh, on a single uh, digital product model while also maintaining the appropriate level of control and change management. And this is really the idea behind the digital prototyping concept. So making sure that the right people get the right data at the right time. The traditional method of product development can make digital knowledge of the product hard to come by in the early conceptual phases. And this is really when the flexibility to make change is the highest. So as the data is passed over to the engineering discipline, incompatibilities can be found that result in decreasing productivity, which can then in turn drive up costs as the data is being recreated. We also see disconnected development processes that can actually lead to uh, further difficulties down the line, for example, resulting in late changes to product design. Also, discovering design flaws in the later stages can also drive down productivity while further driving up the cost. The net result is project delays, overtime, cost overrun, and general customer dissatisfaction. But what we are starting to see now is that more and more forward thinking companies are adopting data management to the workflow and providing that vital connectivity between their development workflows um, with digital prototyping and data management solutions. So all the way from concept through to delivery. And this really provides them with a lot of benefits. Uh, first of all, we have a, a single centralized digital model for our product throughout the entire development process. So have one true source of information for all the, the design information. And we can save time and money by avoiding um, duplication of work through the reuse of data. And our designs become more adaptable to change. In short, we really improve the efficiency of our engineering process so that we can do more with less. The advantage of um, digital prototyping is twofold. And again, because more product knowledge is available earlier in the design process, and because data loss is minimized or eliminated as we move downstream, productivity is increased while costs are dramatically reduced. And at the same time, most importantly, our ability to innovate is increased. So this means that we can get better products to market in less time resulting in increased revenue and market share as our customers choose our products over the competition. And this is really the key approach to achieve a best in class. So in a study conducted by Tech Clarity, they identified, identified some of the most common business strategies that manufacturers are putting in place to address these challenges. And not surprisingly, product differentiation through innovation and customization along with uh, competing in the global market are the top three business strategies for growth. Okay, and also managing production costs for custom products with flexible manufacturing and partnering with local manufacturing companies are also in the top five here. The same study then focused uh, on the top performing companies and what they were actually doing to achieve a superior financial performance. And in this case, the top performance were defined as those companies that are growing the revenues and profits from two to two and a half times faster than the average companies in the study. So part of the Autodesk solution for digital prototyping is Autodesk Vault Professional. Autodesk Vault Professional is a data management solution that helps us keep track of uh, our digital design data. It helps us securely store and manage that data in a central location, helping teams to quickly create, share and reuse digital prototyping information. So with Autodesk Vault, you will spend less time chasing down files and more time creating innovative designs. But how is Autodesk different and why should you choose Autodesk Solution for digital prototyping over other alternatives? So first of all, Autodesk Solution is attainable, meaning that it provides us with the fastest path to uh, digital prototyping, whether 
we're currently using 2D AutoCAD or an existing 3D system and we're really looking to take it to the next level. Secondly, auto solution is scalable. So it can be implemented at a place that is right for our business with minimal disruption to the existing business processes. And finally, auto solution is cost effective and it provides us with the clearest path to a significant return on investment. So some of the major business benefits here uh, is an improved pro project quality and outcome, better insight and predictability for a timely and profitable delivery, and really better overall efficiency. So, and this is because data management solution project teams are getting the right information to the right people at the right time. So it brings stakeholders together and provides a single source of truth for updated information and collaboration across the projects with rapid deployment and uh, quick return on investment. So this slide shows us the comprehensive vault functionality. Um, and really, we tend to categorize the functionality in three levels, the end user, the process, and the enterprise. So end users are already working the design applications daily, and their purpose is uh, to get in and get out, so to speak. So to get access to the most up-to-date files, and do not really want to spend time looking for a reference file or whatever happens to be they need. At the process level, here might not be the people that are working the design applications, but they are definitely participating in the workflow, or there might be consumers of the data across the project. So being able to access and view the information as well as taking part in the lifecycle management is important to them. Um, at the enterprise level are really the, the executives and stakeholders who really have to make sure that technology complies with security, reporting and integration with other applications and systems. So most of you might already be getting the benefits of um, the basic version of Vault. So you have seen how Autodesk Vault integrates with um, Autodesk design applications such as Inventor, Autodesk Electrical, Mechanical and more. But note that there is also third-party application integration through your Autodesk subscription for uh, products like ProE, SolidWorks, MicroStation and EdgeCam. This deep integration makes it easy to manage data associated with your digital prototype, from architecture to engineering through to manufacturing by saving us time and ensuring data accuracy. So some of the major benefits of uh, the Vault Basic version is uh, it provides us with efficient data reuse, reuse, and this is achieved through the functionality called Copy Design, which allows intelligent and selective copying of digital prototype, including all related files and documentation for reuse in a new design. So we can save hours of previous uh, design times with this intelligent copy functionality and prevent users from having to manually recreate or duplicate complex or large models. Also, with the basic version, we can easily edit and manipulate uh, design files without risking uh, breaking important application links, whether that's uh, an AutoCAD XREF or inventor relationship files. So this also includes the ability to rename, replace, move or edit the properties and more, ensuring that common file operations that users need to do on a regular basis do not really affect the integrity of their designs and saving hours of manual cleanup. <coughs> Excuse me. Finally, a set of designs um, are typically needed to be plotted or printed for manufacturing purposes. So Vault basically, uh, the Vault basic version gives us the ability to pull the, all the relevant files together um, and gives us the ability to create and manage and reuse print jobs and plot jobs uh, with full support of watermarking and stamping. So we can reduce time spent on administrative tasks by leveraging the Vault batch um, print and plot manager. And really at the heart of the story, there's a simple truth that nobody really wakes up in the morning excited to do data management. And you didn't really get into engineering to manage data. So, so don't let Autodesk Vault Professional automate those data management tasks for you so that you can fo focus on the design aspect. Secondly, you already have fundamental data management capabilities with your Autodesk Suite or subscription, but you can do much more with the advanced functionality of Vault Professional. So Vault Professional helps you track engineering change orders, manage build materials, and promote collaboration throughout the organization and more. So let's look at some of this um, functionality that it provides in a bit more detail before we jump into the practical demonstration. So the Vault, Autodesk Vault family of products, the professional version provides, um, delivers revision and lifecycle control process from directly within our design application. 
which will result in faster cycle times and better quality of engineering data. So we can capture, um, excuse me, the history of our design concepts and allows us to quickly iterate on new ideas, revert back to previous concepts and arrive in the final digital prototype in record time without the overhead errors and loss of data that accompanies manual backup and copy methods. Further, we can um, easily release files into a vault and track revision history of the files in a single location, ensuring that the designs are released and tracked as they transition through the life cycle. So as a result, we can control critical aspects of our design data as it graduates through its stages of life, ensuring that people get the correct data at the right time. With the professional vault, with the professional version of vault, uh, we have the ability to uh, manage engineering change orders, and this can be done by using an intuitive graphical workflow and, and an interface that helps us automate this process. Uh, so design teams can choose from a standard out of the box configuration, or they have the ability to uh, fully configure the process of releasing uh, an engineering change order management. So we can avoid costly mistakes and remove the process bottlenecks. We also have, uh, with the professional version, Vault makes it easier to uh, create and maintain an accurate and complete manufacturing bill of materials. And again, this is done directly within our CAD model. So we can maintain a complete control over the bomb, easily manage materials, quantities and other properties of the design. Um, a very unique capability with Vault uh, professional version is the ability to create what's called custom objects. So VaultNAP permits users to define objects and to store and manage unique contents uh, to feed our business purposes. So from simply storing uh, contact information through to creating uh, documented packages uh, or lifecycle managed tasks. So Vault introduces a new set of security levels to manage the creation and access to custom objects. Uh, Vault Professional also employs the principle of visual data management. So mapping analytical report data directly onto our CAD model. So with data mapping, users can highlight and select information such as parts pending change, current project status, and any other uh, compliance uh, with the life cycle. Data map mapping can also um, features report publishing, which enables users to share analysis results with other work group members. Okay, so the, the idea behind enabling designers and engineers uh, or managers to visualize data directly within the CAD model is to help uh, you make better informed decisions quicker. Autodesk Vault Professional provides us the right access but also maintains a full secure and control access to data. So we can prevent unwanted changes to design milestones by controlling the release process and permissions around the different stages of a life cycle. So we can also incorporate um, password policies, uh, client requirements, government and other regulatory businesses, ensuring that the data integrity is maintained throughout. Uh, integration with existing uh, business system is another great advantage of Vault Professional. And we can further improve visibility into our design and manufacturing process. So with Auditive Vault Professional, everyone in our organization can see the design and engineering data. Departments like procurement, marketing, and management can securely access latest drawings for review without having to bother the engineering, uh, the engineer or designer. So everyone on our team can see what's happening on every project and plan accordingly. And don't forget that if your if your company is currently using Microsoft SharePoint, then it's even easier because Autodesk Vault Professional integrates with SharePoint right out, out of the box. Finally, we can utilize the Autodesk Vault scalable architecture and connect distributed workgroups with advanced administrative tools to really support a larger user base. So here in the professional version we've got multi-site functionality that enables companies to synchronize distributed file stores among design workgroups. Uh, this synchronization allows the design data across multiple sites and gives access to them um, as if uh, to the users as if they were in that same location. And it can enable extended workgroups to work more efficiently together. Plus, we can easily maintain large sets of users and support corporate password policies by utilizing uh, the Autodesk Vault integration with Microsoft Active Directory. Administrators can then make the workgroups gain even more uh, performance improvements. And this can be done by offloading the publishing of the visualization file 
so the DWF file creation moves from the client to the server and this has been done by using a, a, an external utility called, called the job processor. Uh, finally, as a rule of thumb, larger databases take longer uh, to back up. So a Vault Professional provides administrator with the ability to do live and incremental backup tools, ensuring that the critical uh, system snapshots are taken without having to take users offline or interrupt user productivity. Okay, so without further ado, let's uh, jump on to the practical um, demonstration of our product. So here we have the Autodesk Vault Professional uh, client. Uh, so it looks like uh, Windows Explorer, I guess, if you, you've got your uh, tree structure on the left. Uh, if you highlight your, your individual folders and files preview on the right. You've got a section for a preview and other properties on the bottom. Um, there's a section for your whitelist, so if I had a pending task that was uh, under my name, under my username, or I was part of an engineering change order, this would show up in this section. Uh, I've got a section for some shortcuts that I can create. We've got different tasks, as I mentioned, and I would see them up here. My custom items that I mentioned in the presentation, but we're going to look up in practice in a minute. And any kind of the list of ND, any engineering change orders that are either still pending or have already been closed. So if I switch back to my home view, I've got a section for all the properties on the side as well. And really the um, a big advantage of the basic well, basic version is the ability to have an advanced search. So here I can add a number of different criteria to that, whether that's um, AutoCAD XREFs or any kind of um, file properties really, so I can really dig in through those. So for example, if I wanted to look for a description cylinder uh, created by Steve, let's say. Now you see how quick that is, that's because uh, it's almost instant because all the files that have been into the vault have got the properties indexed, which basically means um, kind of looking like through a text file or an XML file. So uh, unlike the manual sort of Windows search method that, that you have for Windows Explorer. Okay, so in this example I found uh, what I was looking for. Um, so here are some of the tabs. We have uh, thumbnail view, the history of the different versions. Okay, if I had, I can show previous version history. Um, more importantly, where it's actually been used. So this is a part that's part of a uh, top level assembly and it's got its own individual part drawing as well. This shows us if it's been controlled by a change order, it's not at the moment. We can also see a preview of that particular part uh, without having to access a CAD application for that. Okay, now let, let's look into this further. Let's navigate, if we right click and skip, say go to the top level assembly folder. Uh, and let's have a preview of uh, the assembly itself and look at what we're going to be working on today. So in this example, we have uh, just a two-stroke engine here, uh, and we're going to be look using it as an example. Uh, here we have the full structure of uh, what this is part of, and the history as well. So let's look at um, where it's used. So this is the top-level drawing, and I'm going to navigate through to that. Uh, have a preview of that maybe. Okay, so that's uh, our, our our drawing here. So really the best functionality uh, through the Vault basic version here is the ability to copy design, to create an entirely new design uh, from an already existing model. So in this particular case, I'm going to take the top level drawing of this uh, two-stroke engine and I'm going to create a new design uh, by using reusing some of the parts or creating new ones. So I want to create a new drawing and I want to create a new top level assembly. All the rest of the parts are going to be reused. And I also want to create a new version of that um, part that we we're looking at through our search. Uh, you can see the new file name that it's going to give that. I uh, actually want to use the incremental and apply so that it gives, um, we're following our company's naming scheme. Okay. So just by clicking a few clicks away, I can very quickly and securely create a new version of my design. Okay, so this saves me a lot of time from having to do the old sort of copy methods uh, and avoiding any issues with any uh, links to already existing part files.
Okay, so once uh, this is complete, I will now be able to see a new version of that drawing. So 005 is the new copied version. Okay, if I do uh, so history, so it's a copy file from the original one. Uh, I'm actually going to create a, a shortcut for that so that we can uh, quickly navigate through it. Uh, maybe uh, go to the top level assembly and create another shortcut for that. As well as for the part uh, that I, I was searching for earlier. Okay, so if I go to my top level drawing, so let's have a look at what uh, things look like through our CAD application. And in this example, I'm using um, Inventor Professional. So I've already logged in through my Vault tab into my Vault, uh, and I can actually open a file from within the Vault. I can navigate manually here, or I can use the shortcuts that I've just created. So I'm going to navigate to the drawing and open the latest version of that. So the first thing Inventor is asking me whether I want to check the file out. Um, and obviously with the base version, you get this ability to check files in and out of the vault. And this is the whole idea behind data management. That as soon as I check this file out, it will uh, people that log into the Vault Explorer will be able to see that this file is busy and edited. So uh, it avoids the confusion of people working at the same in the same file at the same time and also provides um, a secure access to my drawing okay so I'm gonna um, go ahead I can uh, take out for edits put some uh, reasonable comments there and I'm gonna open up the drawing so with the vault basic we have that um, ability to have centralized data and once the file is checked out it takes a copy from the serve from the file store and creates a local copy into our workspace. So in regards to network performance, uh, Vault will help us uh, improve that as well. Okay, so it's asking me whether I want to check out the top level assembly. I'm gonna say yes to that because I know I'm gonna be working for that, win that. We've got our uh, title block here, our revision, everything looks all right. I'm actually gonna open the assembly from the drawing. Okay, so this is uh, our top level assembly. If I switch to my Vault browser here, I get a lot of information of all the parts and what their current project status is. So we can see the ones that are released and they've got a little lock icon on the side. And this is because of my level of access. As a user, um, as soon as the files are released, I'm no longer able to put them back into work in progress unless I was part of an engineering change order. Okay, so we can customize the security level to a great extent here. Okay, so let's start working with um, our assembly here and I'm just going to make a, a slight modification in the part that we were searching for earlier. Uh, it's just going to take this um, feature here and just uh, take a one millimeter off the base just for the purpose of ex example. So inventor is asking me to check that particular file out. I'm going to say yes to that. All right, maybe uh, switch to body and just make a change in the appearance just to make note that uh, I've created something new on that. I'm going to return to my top level assembly. So you can see the file is checked out or under my name. If I was to navigate back uh, and refresh here, the drawing is checked out to my name and uh, so is the, the file itself. Okay, so let's make um, another change here that we could uh, do on our engine. For example, use a different method, one of these parts that is already released. Actually, I've changed my mind and I want to make a change to that. So I can use a, an alternative method to do that, a more manual method if I wanted to save, edit this file and save as. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to just to show you how uh, Vault Professional gives us the ability to have um, a naming scheme for our files so we can for follow our company standards for that. So it automatically takes me to the parts folder and iterates through my part number. So I've saved a new version of that uh, into my fold workspace. And I want to take this the original one that is already released uh, and replace it with my new one. So I'm going to go component replace. <coughs> it's probably going to be at the bottom of the list. There it is, the one that we just saved as. Do I want to save changes to the original? I'll say no to that. Okay, so I now have an entire new file that hasn't even been checked into the vault yet. And maybe you want to make some changes to that, uh, just for the purpose of this example. 
I'm going to create a, another instance of that on the other end. Okay. I'm going to return to my top level assembly. So as soon as we make some changes, uh, we can then save our assembly. Some of the files need to be migrated, that's fine. And then uh, check everything in. Okay, let me just uh, let's save to that. There's still some files pending migration. So it shows me which files that have been made change to. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead, I could put some comments on there, going to go ahead and check everything in. It's asking me, do you want to uh, check in the linked DWF files? I'm going to say yes because I've Enable this prompt just to remind myself um, to show you the job process or utility that I mentioned in my presentation. So uh, this is the utility that runs either, obviously normally would run on a server and would automatically run in the background and take care of the creation of the DWA files for everything that I check into the vault. So we just kind of just let that do its thing on the background. Okay, so the next thing um, I wanted to show you here so we're now moving to the professional version, really. Um, if we go to our vault section, is the visual the ability to visually map data. So data mapping here, and we've got the ability to visualize um, what's happening in our life cycle by using a number, a different number of templates. So these are ones that are, can be installed already out of the box. So we can categorize our parts of the assembly using different criteria here. And the one I'm going to use in this case uh, I've already run this before. It categorizes everything according to its uh, life cycle state. So it's going to show me the percentage of um, things that have been released uh, and things of uh, and purchased, and the percentage of things that are still work in progress. And the good thing about this is that um, I can actually, uh, if I apply the color mapping to my model, I can see everything visually, and I can let's say uh, create a the ones that are already purchased into my selection set and maybe turn the visibility off so I can clearly see it's asking me to check out the top level assembly that's fine, I'll go ahead and do that so I can clearly see what is still work in progress okay, what I can then do is maybe show you the data cards here so I can select all the ones that are work in progress uh, and either click here or right click on go data cards Let's uh, select that again and go to the data cards here. So what I want to show you here, we've got the ability to, through our CAD application, we don't even have to use the client, we can edit a multiple number of files at the same time and access all the properties here. So in this particular example, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to take credit for all these designs. And it applies, so the designer property is going to be updated for all these files at the same time. Okay then, so I could maybe then save the changes. So it's asking me to migrate the files. So data mapping gives us the ability to run different reports and visually see what's happening in our CAD model. Okay, and this is very useful for taking decisions. We can also create uh, reports here that we can then communicate our design the or the, the status of our life cycle or everything else that happens to be that we're reporting on through a, um, to our colleagues and work groups okay so um, let's uh, check everything in uh, since it's been saved uh, maybe put some comments uh, it So all the files have been checked in. I could maybe continue this workflow and select all these again and change the state. So let's say that these were ready to be released now. So because of my level of access as the username, I can only have a certain amount of things I can do from here. So in this case, I can set them to release. I've got, I can add my own comments. Or I've got a preset. Um, comments here that are part of my life cycle. So I'm going to go ahead and use them, my preset ones. So you can see the log icon across all my 
And if I was to run this uh, report again now, and apply the column mappings that will reflect the changes. So I've only got a 2.6% of work in progress, which really is my top level assembly and my drawing. Okay, so let's go back to um, our drawing here. This is automatically updating my assembly so that we can see what's happening. And again, I can switch to my vault. And if I check in my top level, let me save that. And click OK to that. OK, so everything is, is checked in. And actually, to complete my workflow here, I'm just going to change the state for the top level drawing and assembly. So this is now uh, fully released. So if I uh, switch back sorry, to my vault here, and I refresh, I'll see the lock icon. I no longer have access to that. Uh, if I minimize here, so that's um, a small part of the life cycle here. But really what I wanted to show you here, so let's say for the purposes of this demonstration, let's say that I wasn't really paying to a, a great deal of attention here in my design, and I've noticed that um, the shaft here is going through the bonnet. Now, obviously, I have already released this design, this new design. So this is what I want to show you how the engineering change order works. So I know there's an issue there, and I want to um, initiate an engineering change order to uh, amend and resolve that issue. Now I'm going to do that using the top level drawing. So currently it's locked, but I, what I can do is I can create a, a new change order. So it automatically gives it a, a, a number. I can say, uh, give it a title. Maybe we can create a, a markup there as well. So I'm going to uh, put C markup as comments. What are we going to see change of? We're going to see a change on uh, the drawing and a change on the part to on the bonnet part to resolve this issue. Which are the records? Uh, so I've already um, put the relationship associated with the top level drawing, but I can right click and say add related, and I want to add the top level assembly as well as the part that is the bonnet, the crank bonnet. So, so this is 005, I believe. Okay, so these are the, the three new records here. I can add comments, so this is very useful. So you can add, when, when as soon as this ECR is going to be initiated, you, a lot of people can be emailed, whether that's individual people or work groups that are part of this workflow. Uh, or you can, and you can add any comments and attachments to that. Um, these are the files that are involved. Um, so let's look at my... Okay, so... I'll go back uh, to my records here. So this is my drawing here, and if I click on update, okay. So we've got a preview of our um, current drawing. And what I wanted to show you here, and the reason for waiting for that, is to show you how we can actually create a, the markup that I mentioned earlier. So I can, from my drawing, uh, I can create a, a revision uh, cloud here and say uh, extend by five millimeters, and maybe even put a, a rejected stamp for that. Okay, and then I can save that um, as a new markup. That is going to be part of my ECR as well. So I'm uh, just going to give it a generic title. Again, we can email people and send comments and attachments. I've just put that into my ECR. This is the routing, so we can make sure that different work groups that are part of this workflow are being uh, notified for the ECR. And this is the graphical interface that I mentioned in my presentation. So we can see visually see at which stages this engineering change order is. So I'm going to initially save that. And I actually push that to an open state. Again, I can contact everyone that is related to that. So now you can see the little ECR change order icon onto the next. And if I refresh, I'll get my ECR on my work list as well. So I can quickly navigate to that. 
and if I open it, I can look at my records and actually now I should be able to uh, change the state to a work in progress because I'm involved in the ECR. Again, uh, different types uh, of comments that I can use here. So I've changed those to work in progress and actually I'm going to push the status from open uh, submitted to the work phase. Okay. And I'm going to close this down and actually switch back to my inventor so that we can uh, <coughs> see that I'm going to open the latest version for that. <coughs> actually open my drawing. Okay, so <coughs> because this is a new release, I can see that now my tail block has already been updated. This is revision B. And I'm going to go ahead and open my top level assembly again. Uh, switch to my vault so we can see what's happening. And so this is the part that I've already checked out and it's work, worked in progress. Not checked out, but changed the state. And I'm going to start making the changes. Uh, I'm going to move this two faces by uh, five millimeters. It's asking me to check the file out. I'll say yes to that. Okay, some small amendments to make on the, uh, an earlier version material. Okay, and then return back to my top level. So once I've made the change, uh, I'll go ahead and save that. Uh, sorry about that. So if I need, to, I need to check out my check out my top level um, assembly as well. Give those two a save. Just migrating some files, and then check everything back in. Uh, Okay, so if I switch back to my drawing, I'll wait for that, this is a live update, I'll be able to now see the updated information, so that's that issue is now resolved. So if I switch back to my vault, I can then save my drawing as well, and check all those back in. I will change the state and set those to release now. And switch back to my uh, Vault interface. So if I refresh that, my ECR that is currently in the work state, my records have now been released. And I can now push forward. Uh, I can, uh, actually, in this particular case, I'm going to fast track to approval. I'm going to skip the whole review just for the purposes of this demonstration. Again, emails and comments available through that state. And the final thing to do before we close down this ECR is to set the effectivity for that. Okay, so that's how ECRs work. Uh, just a quick glimpse on the workflow there. So the next thing um, to show you here, if I switch back to my workspace, um, is how we can use the, what I mentioned in the presentation, the custom item objects, okay? So for example, I'm going to use uh, multiple properties and search through my entire um, through my entire workspace uh, for anything that has to do with wiring. So therefore, I'll be resulting for it with a few electrical components here. And what I was interested in particular was this assembly here. So this is a, an electrical enclosure. Now let's say that being part of the uh, manufacturing department, I've been uh, with we have been helping in designing the, the actual enclosure itself, but we're also working with colleagues from the electrical departments that have been uh, doing schematics on AutoCAD electrical for that particular enclosure. Now the whole idea behind having uh, custom items in is the ability to bring those two together, bring the departments together. So I want to create the idea is to create a one unified bill of materials for both electrical and manufacturing. 
Okay, so for this, in this example, I'm going to highlight my electrical wiring schematics as well as my top level assembly. Right click and say uh, assign item. What this will do, Vault will through, look through the relationships of both those files and all the other relationships that they have themselves and create uh, a new custom item that will hold all this information together. Okay, and we can add or take things off from that. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, design files, it can be documents, it can be presentations, anything you like. Okay, so if I right click here and say go to item now, that will automatically switch me to my items master. And this is the new wiring enclosure item that I've created. If I double click on it, I'll see that a numerous of files, even the presentation, is involved in this. Uh, we have now every time there's going to be a new a new change made in one of these files the revision now will follow suit for the rest of the uh, things that are associated with it and here I've got my bill of materials unified bill of materials and I can actually export this but we also have the ability to bring information in and, and at this stage what I wanted to show you is not only can we export information for bill of materials but it, we can also bring things into the vault and in this particular case, uh, I wanted to show you uh, an example of, of uh, an S, uh, CSV file, a spreadsheet that has come from an external ERP system. So I mentioned we're working with the electrical team as well. Uh, and some of these people are using an external ERP system to for, for the bill of materials. So what basically what I have here is a bill of materials for the PCB board that is into the assembly and all the components are included on the PCB board. Now, I want to really ideally include this into my custom item, the new custom item I created and bring all this information into my uh, BOM. So the way to do this is I can use my import items tool and I can use some Microsoft uh, inputs so I can use the um, CSV and browse to my desktop and pointed to that file that I showed you. Now this will go according to the columns that I had on my spreadsheet and in this case they're uh, pretty straight straightforward. If there was any problems with that I can manually edit and map uh, these as I like. Okay so it's showing me what it's going to create. Um, it's going to create all these new, there's no conflicts. If there were conflicts I can manually change that or uh, point it to the right direction from here. Okay, just a summary, everything has been successfully imported. So let's go back to our custom item, back into our Bureau of Materials, uh, and start adding all this information into our... So what, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to search by category, so anything that contains uh, electrical. And I can see some of the new parts here, so adding the schematics that my colleagues from the uh, electrical teams have done and also adding the imported contents from the CSV file. Okay, so if I expand that, now not only do I have the electrical schematics, but I also have the important contents that come from the sales purchase department for the PCB components that are required for this. Okay, so that's it in regards uh, to the custom items. I'm going to save changes to that. Um, one final thing I really wanted to show you here is um, the fact that we have the ability to, we also have what's called a web client with a professional version. So we can give um, access to people uh, from a web browser, web-based interface, and we can limit that to uh, as much as we like. So we can give access to people that are external from the company and only show them specific things in our vault and have limited permissions uh, to that. Okay. Okay, so this is the web interface that I mentioned. It's pretty much uh, an explorer like we had, an FTP explorer maybe, like we had so I can navigate to my workspace like I was in my um, professional client. Okay, and they can see 3D previews from here as well. 
So that really pretty much concludes my today's presentation demonstration on the vault uh, and vault basic and vault professional. I hope um, you got something out of the demonstration. You can clearly see the, some of the major differences between the two versions. So I'm going to switch back to my demonstration to, to close up this session. Okay, so the final thing, uh, a few few more slides, I um, just wanted to mention the powerful integration with Jitterbit. So this is uh, two ven powerful vendors come together to provide a, a simple yet powerful application and data integration toolkit. So Autodesk and Jitterbit can provide you, and Vault can provide you a point and click user experience between your um, ERP system and your data management solution. So it can seamlessly scale to your business and use advanced and high performance um, data handling. Okay, and the way basically this works, we uh, it's a three-step integration. So we define the connection between the two systems, uh, so the ERP and our data management solution, uh, and map uh, and transform data to process. Um, we also have uh, integration managing monitoring tools that to accompany that as well. So in this slide, I just have um, the different the feature comparison between the, base, the basic version and the professional. So as we saw, the basic version, well, it can integrate with CAD application. We've got file management tools. Uh, we can have the fast advanced searching, and most importantly, the ability to copy design with data reuse tools. Obviously, the professional version takes it to the full extent there. So we can do reporting, multi-site replication, custom objects, bill of materials, and all the stuff we saw during the demonstration. So just to summarize um, on some of the key things that we have seen today, we've seen how the Vault Professional provides a complete product data management system with the ability to quickly find and reuse um, data to explore new ideas, um, control design access and history with revision management, uh, the simplified yet powerful administrative tools and out of the box configurations that can help us benefit from the solution straight away. The advanced collaboration tools and the ability to scale up to a larger work groups and multi-site capabilities. Uh, and really how Vault Professional extends the idea of digital prototyping into manufacturing and beyond. So with that, I'd like to close my today's session. Um, I hope you find some useful information there. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. I'll be happy to help. Um, thank you very much for taking the time and looking forward to seeing you in one of our next sessions. Thank you.